We've always had room in our hearts for film and TV Not just on Netflix, but tape and disc in theaters and Also God forbid that they take it all away And leave us nothing to broadcast to loyal listeners We'll binge watch every single movie So you don't have to What else are we here for? Coming to you every week Listen to us while you're busy Luckily we forgot to grow up Hey everybody, it's Craig. Hey, it's Scott. Hey, it's Andrew. Welcome to episode number 72 of the Forgot to Grow Up podcast, the Family Day edition. For those of you who aren't in one of the select provinces, Ontario, Alberta, Saskatchewan, uh, I can't remember. We just had Family Day. There are other provinces that have it on different days. It's a whole thing. And if you're outside the country, well, you didn't have Family Day. Or you did. did President's Day in the U.S. Oh, always making up excuses to have a friggin' holiday. Have, just just jack our days. Yep, yep. We can't have one of our own. No Ours such thing. Ours is only like four even, years old. Even when we have, well, in this province it is. It's older in other places. Okay. Other provinces have different holidays for theirs. Like, uh, um, uh, they've got Louis Real Day out, uh, out west, that kind of thing. I think that's Manitoba. Gotcha. So we, we all just need an excuse to have a day off in February. Really, we just wanted to balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and every time we get a holiday, the Americans pick one up. So, you know, there's no, there's no winning. Uh, so we're going to talk about our favorite family-friendly films. That's not an alliteration mouthful. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what we watched this week. So I don't know about you guys, but the very first movie that I remember getting on VHS, because we're ancient. Let's Monsters just, Incorporated? Let's just be honest. It actually wasn't Monsters, Inc. That's, one of the, that's the first movie I remember memorizing large sections of. Like, you know, this is now I'm way off track already. You know that scene when they're in the cave with the uh, the abominable snowman? Yep. Yeah. The one voiced by the guy who plays Ham? Yes. Yeah. That's the one. Um, I used to have that whole scene memorized when I was nice. much younger. I don't anymore. I haven't seen that movie in forever. <laughs> uh, but no, the first movie I remember getting on VHS was Space Jam. Got that for my birthday. That is a oh, solid pick. That. And that takes one. Friendly. That would takes one off my list. Watch the hell out of that tape. Oh yeah, I think I wore wore out the tape I had as well. I used to put it in the uh, in little race car rewinder. Just oh, to I listen miss to the thing. Things. Spin- oh, it's the best part. Like, those things would always break at my like at my, at my grandparents' house. Though they went through like fifteen in my childhood. I we swear. had That's one probably an forever. I wish my parents had kept it. That was the only tape rewinder that I ever remember having. I think my dad still has his race car one, too. It looked like, like a black Pontiac Grand Prix. Yeah, we had a red one. That's awesome. Basically the same idea. I would have loved a Batmobile one. That would be, that'd be pretty that'd cool, be really too. Cool. If my parents weren't poor that. and they loved me, they should have bought a Batmobile rewinder in the past. Well, Andrew's time-traveling parents. Go back and do that. Um, Figure it out. Yeah. That's Mom. the Back to the Future reboot. <laughs> That's right it. there. <laughs> when we bought yeah, useless w- pieces of technology. Instead of super intense Huey Lewis music. I want more super intense Huey Lewis music. Like written specifically <laughs> for the film? Yeah. Like bring, Two songs for the film. Bring them out of retirement? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Exactly. Um, just, just before we go back to, to movies, I just think it's funny that they had a whole piece of technology entirely devoted to rewinding those things because they couldn't come up with a better way to re-reel the tape yeah, yeah. like you couldn't, like couldn't just play it backwards or anything no nope, yeah, it had, had to be a, rewind. a separate thing well they had to make money off it too right it's well and you could use your vhs but, or you could use your vcr but why why gum up the vcr you could just be watching another movie and well that's exactly that's why right. you always wanted like so yeah. you never waste the time with that. and did it so much faster too and made an <laughs> exactly. awesome revving sound <laughs> yeah that's that's the only thing my office is missing. We already we have the dial up modem, the dot matrix printer, <laughs> and the floppy disks. We just need a VHS tape rewinder, and wow. we would you'd be officially be officially back in the, the 90s. Yeah. I mean, my boss has an original Mac, so oh. we just set them all up together, and uh, and then it'd be fun. I'm sure I'm sure somebody's got some tapes we can rewind. Be great. Oh, speaking of tapes, actually, that's this is completely off track. But um, American really Outfitters, this week, guys. 
Yeah, oh, we're going with it. But American Outfitters, which is some random company in the U.S., I guess, um, they are now selling, I believe it is eight, no, no, it's five VHSs, used VHSs as a collection um, for $50. Wow. People are buying this thing. Who has $50 to throw a dead technology? I... I Surprising don't know what to tell you. People. How else do you think the record significant number industry of people. got resurgence? See, records are cool, though. Yeah, and so <laughs> are VHS tapes, I guess. No, they're not, because... The cassettes and... I, see, see, I thought this would be all the other my way vinyl around. That's, all my vinyls that's warped, I throw it on, and you know they get that little bit of noise every once in a while. I can suffer through that. I can sing louder. When I'm watching a damaged VHS with dust in there, or just a streak on it, when I when that part skips and goes fuzzy, it's just like uh, fuck me. Brings back good memories watching the tracking try to correct itself off. Makes me want to throw my seven inch TV across the fucking room. So this week's episode was about <laughs> family being movies. calm with our families, and, and so far it's, it's just all we've done is talk about old outdated media. Yeah, um, just like us. Yeah, old and outdated. Yeah. Let's not say like, that well, too loud. I'm just going to go on record, and I want, I'm not going to list options. I'm just going to say Disney movies in general. All right. Yeah, there's a lot. Well, that let's takes be real. All like, my, that takes my entire list away. Let's be real. How many Disney movies aren't child-friendly? Exactly. That's that's what their brand is built around, is being child, yeah. like family-friendly. Particularly Pixar with the like appealing a little bit more to adults. A little bit. Disney but... stands for Doesn't It Sound Nice, Everyone Young Lee? I was on a roll there until I got to the fucking Y. Doesn't it sound nice, everyone? Youngly. <laughs> Youngly. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> that's not doesn't it not sound? What you were going for? Doesn't it sound nice? Ampersand entirely youthful. We'll pretend it's a very small ampersand. You got to help me out with what that is. That's the and symbol. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. Learned something new today. Anyways, so yeah, I <laughs> I agree. I kind of I've written down Pixar and Disney just just in general because that's you could really do hours and hours of talking about that. And yeah, I, it, I could do forty five minutes of a Bug's Life yep. and that's, talk about how uh, I don't know if I could go that long. For Francis is amazing. Life. I could talk that long for her, about Hercules, maybe. Yo, Hercules. Exactly. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, Hercules is great. Um, Mulan, Migna Wen. Oh, that's that is actually one of my favorite ones as well. I it's would love to see ass. a live action remake of that with her. Well, I know they're doing a live action remake. I don't. I just. I only want her. I don't believe it's with her. Well, they better make it with her, man. I think we've moved past that part in casting already. Oh, these motherfuckers need to figure it out. It's called recasting. And then get Dennis Leary on board somehow. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, back to the list. So we covered Disney. Yeah. And I'm just going to put a blanket statement as all superhero movies. Except for Blade. Yep. And Deadpool. <laughs> Gotta cover Blade. And Deadpool. And, and, any and uh, ones. yeah, just yeah, the R-rated ones, really. And Spawn, let's throw Spawn, Spawn in there yeah, too. That's definitely not child appropriate. Uh, Sin City, but, <laughs> yeah, Sin City, yeah. Well, was, that was a comic movie. That wasn't a superhero movie. Okay, fair. That's fair. I, I. Let's just me, say all the, the DC and MCU movies. Yeah, you're safe with those ones. There we go. Blanket statements, especially the animated DC movies. Yes. So now that we've blanket well, stated, mostly actually, because there's a there's that one with Harley Quinn. And oh yeah, with the nip slip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The animated nip slip. Well, and the implication of her going down on Nightwing. And then oh getting yeah, freaky that's, a, well, that's a different one entirely. Jeez. That's definitely not. That's two separate ones. Yeah, it's not family friendly at all. No, no, that's true. So or we, actually, you know what? Both of the Suicide Squads have some nudity because there's the the implied sex scene in uh, Assault on Arkham. Yeah. Where she goes nuts on Deadshot. Yep. There's a lot of that. Yeah, so not those ones. Yeah, don't watch that with your family. <laughs> no. So I'll throw in next, since we've covered those blanket statements, Power Rangers, because why the fuck not? Yeah. I can't Give me a reason. 
you, you can't. <laughs> I can't. I cannot. You can't. Audience, I don't hear a reason from you. <laughs> nope, didn't, didn't pipe up. Didn't hear nothing. Cool. Lego movie. Yeah, all the Lego movies. All the Lego movies. Even the ones that aren't Lego movies. Yeah, those ones too. <laughs> Next up, we got Land Before Time series. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All of them. I Even the bummer too. ones. I had forgotten about those. They teach. I think they're very important for children, though, because they help teach you a little bit about life and death, I think. Well, the first one does for sure. And, yeah. I mean, really... Is there a, a better way to teach your kid that one day your grandparents might die? Probably. I, I, I literally probably cannot nothing think of a safer. Way. I cannot think like, of a better way. <laughs> no, like for that, and there's a couple. Like I remember, like it still bums me the fuck out just thinking about it. There's the one where like his grandpa almost dies, yeah, no, and I, they have to go get him like the special shit. Oh my god! Like being a grandpa's boy, I was like, <laughs> no, my grandpa died. Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, and then I, it teaches I'm you sorry. like. To, like acceptance you know when they introduce chomper the little t-rex as a baby and they're like nah he's cool and they're like no 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 this this motherfucker's gonna eat us like nah he's cool he's, he's okay cool. right now you can't we're kids with the baby it's all good yeah yeah they they teach you that to accept that they have the uh they have spike who can't talk who i always kind of thought they was inferring like maybe he was autistic or something like that because he was kind of the slow one and they accept him like a motherfucker, and he is badass. He's probably top three favorite characters on that show. Obviously, Sarah goes at the bottom. You remember so much more about this than I do. That's the trust. <laughs> Petrie's the pterodactyl. He goes at the bottom because he's annoying as fuck. That doesn't. Do su- remember? It that. doesn't surprise me that you don't like Petrie. Why? I just, Why? Because he's annoying just, as fuck. It, he just seems like the kind of character you wouldn't like at all. That's yeah, all. I don't. Yeah. He's annoying makes, as shit. That makes sense to me. Next up, yeah, next would be Spike. And then we'd have Ducky because she's adorable. See, and I then Littlefoot because he's a bad ma- mamma jamma. I wasn't a huge fan of Ducky. Why? Like, that was, that was Spike's older sister that he had to look out for. Yep. And Sarah just straight up fucking sucked. Yep. <laughs> she's just a bitch. They're all pretty awesome. I mean, it's not all her way. fault. Like, her dad kind of sucked too. He was very, stay away from my kid. They're they're all pretty off on their own kind of way, but that's what it's like to hang out with children. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Next up on my list, I have Rugrats in Paris. That is a good I one. I don't think I've seen that one. No, that's great. That was the originator of Who Let the Dogs Out. That doesn't matter. <laughs> is that the, you you you? Is, that's probably right. Actually, I never thought yeah, about that that's before. So, like at the end of that movie, they have the music video. Yeah, no, for I, that because they let the dogs run loose in Paris. I remember, I remember exactly what you're talking about. I had forgotten yeah, that all the that, way up to this. I don't know if they, I don't know if that song was made for that movie. I know it was part of that movie, and the music video was in it. And I'm pretty sure they actually show the the dogs from the movie in the music video. So I'm I'm led to believe that that song was written for that movie. I can't disagree. <laughs> yeah. Next up, and I feel like this one isn't covered by Disney because it existed prior, but Star Wars. Yeah. I watched the shit out of those movies. That's a big chunk of my childhood as well. Yeah. Watching with my family. Absolutely. That was a lot of holidays. Because it's one of those things I feel like everyone can kind of agree upon. It's long enough that you can just put it in, and everyone can kind of... You can still have family conversation during it if it's like a family event, but it's... The kids can still focus on it if they want. Yeah. Like, there's there's just enough action to keep the kids involved. But if you watch it more than once as a kid, you also get to, like, you know, learn about people and interaction and stuff. That's not true. That's a stretch. But it's a good fucking movie. And there isn't really anything bad that happens other than a couple people dying. But again, teaches you about life and death. You know, and, and ghosts. watch Power Rangers. Everything dies. Watch life. Everything dies. It is life. Speaking of death, uh, next up on my list, I have All Dogs Go to Heaven. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, God. That's that's one of those movies I watched once as a kid and never again because it made Why? me so sad. It's about dogs well, in what heaven. About, what I about had so all many dogs, dogs go to heaven too many of them too. are in heaven. All Dogs Go to Heaven is nowhere near as sad as Homeward Bound. That's next on my list. <laughs> 
Homeward Bound and Homeward Bound oh, 2. Homeward Bound is soul crushing. Yeah. The no, part I agree with that. The dog. Ugh. That is the only movie those... I'll ever watch with live action dogs talking. Yeah. That's it. And it's all telepathic, which is yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, because they don't actually talk. No one <laughs> no. animated their faces. It's just yeah, like they f- they the just best, film yeah. dogs yeah. and then and a cat. Yep. <laughs> which is the part I appreciate about that one. Like, like I remember growing up, like it. I was glad it wasn't an animated, and that they did do that because it was cool. Yeah. It was cool to think about like how they managed to do that because you're just bringing how many animals was it three? Three, yeah. Yeah. Two and dogs the first was three. Right? There's the boxer, I think, the golden lab, yeah, and then sassy, I think her name was the little cat. I think so too, yeah. yeah. I don't think I ever saw the second one or. The home or Homeward Bound Two, the uh, lost lost in San Francisco, where they get lost in well, San Francisco. Yeah, <laughs> and they they bump into this other dog, who I forget I forget what his name was, but uh, he's this dog that was gotten as a Christmas gift, and then like the next day they get rid of it, and it's kind of like a a silent PSA for don't fucking get your kids a dog, and then say oh let's get rid of it now. Because if you do that, you can die. Yeah, that was a really shitty. You thing should do. die. No, it's you, crazy not, the number you of people who die. do actually do that. Cause it's yeah, like, wait, disgusting. Do you not actually think about how much a responsibility a dog is before you got it? Like, do you not understand? Do you not comprehend that? I've known that since I was six. This is way off topic. Shampoo. You shouldn't bring up dogs, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I stand by it. But speaking of dogs, you know Michael J. Fox. Yep. Is the voice of of Chance. Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. I. Didn't know that off the top of my head. Sally Field as soon was the as voice I, of Sassy. As soon as I saw that he was there, I could I can hear his voice in my head. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, you get an old guy, Ralph Waite, as was, the uh, shadow, the older dog. Was in I, he was in stuff. Yeah. <laughs> stuff. He was actually in a lot, according to his Imdb page. I know. I was going through that real quick. He was in uh, Days of Our Lives and <laughs> NCIS. Something else. Nice. You said days in our lives, and I just started singing the Charles in Charge theme song in my head. I don't know why. That, um... Charles in Charge oh, of our days and our nights. There we go. It was days and nights. That's probably what it was. That makes sense. Anyways, I got two more things on my list for family-appropriate family day movies. Um, another one. This one's animal-related. It's Cats Don't Dance because it's extremely appropriate. It, it teaches people to be super accepting, and it also shows you, if you watch deep enough, that minor, minorities just need to tell people to go fuck themselves. If they're being dicks, don't make anyone feel bad. Just tell them to go fuck themselves. That's, uh, yeah. That's the beauty of the movie, that's, and it's got some catchy-ass songs in there. I don't know this movie you're talking about. <laughs> I've talked about it like 25 times. Cats Don't Dance, it's the one where it's it's... It's pretty racist if you break it down. All the ethnic people in Hollywood are animals because everyone's white. There's like Clark Gable here and a bunch of other old famous white actors and actresses. And then there's just a bunch of animals running loose throughout Hollywood. Okay. All right. And then there, you go into this talent agency and it's just this, this snivelly dude, just this real shady guy who's like, yeah, I can get you parts. You know, we're going to get you this playing this and you playing this. And it's just a bunch of animals trying to get, like, animal roles in movies. But it's implied that that's just everyone who isn't Clark Gable-esque. Yes, I and then it's, 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 the kind of, it's kind of the up, like, the up and coming of these people getting their, you know, getting their turn to star in movies. Okay. It's a kid's movie, but it's... I was going to say, do you want this for a family film? Uh, yeah, I watched it as a kid. That's fair. And, and I'm, I'm tolerant as fuck of all races. That's good to hear. And now it's on the podcast, so it's true. <laughs> yep, that's all I've been thinking for the last, like, five minutes now. It's all on the podcast. <laughs> it's all on the podcast. I'm very pro this movie to teach people, get your head out of your ass. Well, I can agree with that part. Hmm. And the last thing I have on my list is Lord of the Rings. Yep. Because as a, as a young boy, that shit was fucking tight. Yep, we grew up with that. Yeah, no, I can't really think of... The only thing I could say is maybe it's slightly too violent in certain parts, but... It's really long, has some... It's very long. Cinematic <laughs> part. bits, but aside from that, yeah. 
I haven't watched Lord yeah. of the Rings in forever. Me neither. I can't say the same. What about you guys? What else do you guys have on your list? So I have... We, we kind of covered the, the blankets. We did not include DreamWorks in our... Uh, Oh, Shrek. I guess Shrek, Shrek is on first on my list. Yeah. There we go. So there's a lot of DreamWorks things you can toss in blankets. I just wanted to, just because it popped into my head. We did Disney, but um, Aristocats was one of the Disney movies that, that popped into my head as See, being a movie that I absolutely loved. I remember the one. cats being super cute, but I can't think of the Aristocats without thinking of the Aristocrats. No. Oh. A super dirty joke that Gilbert Godfrey told on his one special I watched. And it was disgusting. And just, I, I associate the two together because of the title. And just, ugh. That's too ugh. bad, because the Aristocats is a lovely movie. Super it is. cute. It's I, great. I loved it. Um, I also have... Oh, you know what? After that, I'm just going to add the Robin Hood movie. Yeah. That, one's a, with, that one gets uh, a pretty special mention, too. Where he's a fox and yep. Little John is a giant-ass bear. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, and then I have An American Tale. Five hole? <laughs> ha, ha. <laughs> so, so sad. Uh, so sad. I remember being absolutely terrified of Five Hole Goes West as a kid. And I hope to spread that to my children. Yeah. <laughs> well, they just need to know that there's no cats in America. Fear of all the cats in America. Because yeah. there are cats in America. Spoiler alert. There's lots of cats <laughs> yeah. in America. A lot of cats in America. But... Yes, that's that's the only two things that I have on my list that are that don't fall under the three company Disney. umbrella that we've already given with yep. Disney, Pixar because they used to be separate, and uh, DreamWorks that really covers a lot, a lot of family movies. Scott, yeah. have you got anything else that we've missed so far? Well, uh, the only thing I had written besides those was I had Harry Potter written down. Because mm-hmm. I think they're family. Oh fuck! Family I don't know family. how I missed that one. Unless yeah. your family doesn't approve of magic movies, and then jeez, oh, I can't imagine what like, that's like. Well, I, <laughs> like I couldn't watch these at my grandparents' house, but that's part of the fun of them, I guess, is that you can only watch them with certain family members. <laughs> but I still love them. Can't imagine what that's like. <laughs> the other thing I had written down was this is another Disney property, but I think it deserves a slightly special mention because it's probably one of my favorite, like original disney properties which is the pirates movies all the pirates of the caribbeans hmm. except for maybe the last one but at least the first i will, three I will give you great. the first three the i'll first give three you the first great. three the other two aren't good but the fourth is okay if, if you consider it like a spin-off movie and the fifth one was just a uh, bro yeah well i like them just purely out of like nostalgia because the first pirates movie i remember being like one of the very first movies I was like super excited to go see in theaters and for it to come out. It was the first DVD I ever bought personally. Yeah, because this saw. is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. Exactly. <laughs> Pirates so brave. On the seven sea. The mystical quest of the Isle of Tortuga. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I also had <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles written down because that doesn't fall under any of those categories yet. Man, didn't even think of Timt. Timt. Well, I- I just Tempt. I've got the the TV show DVDs just like three feet from me. So that, nice. That, when I was making the list, it helped. I was like, oh, that's good. I that's fair. Looking that's at all fair. the DVDs I had, I'm like, which of these are family friendly? And I'm like, okay, I'd watch these ones. No, I'm not gonna watch RoboCop with my family. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, I was gonna add Spaceballs to my list because I remember watching that. That's one of the ones I watched at, with when my I was family. like when I was like nine. Well, but also, like, mm, my family was a little more lax than most. Yeah, well, I had a little list of, like, I was originally going to make this as a joke, but then I, it was just not well done. But anyways, I made a list of ones that I watched with my family growing up that they you should not watch with have. your family. Yeah. And the first one is Nightmare on Elm Street, because yeah, probably my not parents loved watching that when we were younger. And I remember always being terrified and running out of the room, because I didn't like Freddy's face. It freaked me out. And the whole... Yeah comes for you in your dreams thing messed with my head because at yeah, that point in my life i'm like that's one of those things that i don't know if it's possible or not no one has given me science that says it otherwise i don't know how dreams work you know what movie gave me nightmares for a while as a kid and i don't know how i didn't add this to my list the page master the page master is wow. great page but definitely really slightly nightmare that. inducing i could see that like the, the, the colors is it the dragon was just scene? yeah 
I where he shows that. up and he's trying to fight it. Just the the books. Doesn't Whoopi yeah. Goldberg voice like one of them? Yeah, she will. Uh, yeah, she she's one of the books. I was gonna say she's yeah. the pirate okay, we'll call book. But she's not the pirate book. No, she's like the fairy book, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, she yeah, is. She's it's, fantasy. Yeah. Patrick Stewart is adventure, and then the guy who voices Patrick Starr, Frank Welker, he's horror. Okay. Leonard Neboy was Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, oh my like, God. I knew let's just let's just rock this IMDb page There's for a, a sec. There's a lot of people in yeah. this. Yeah. Page Master is great. I need to Jim get Cummings is Long John Silver. Jim Cummings is um. That's Megatron, Lloyd, right? Or not Megatron? Optimus Prime, no. right? No. No. Well, it made me in something. No. Um, Megatron is the other, is the guy who voices horror. Oh, okay. That's where okay. he's the Mickey Mouse stuff. Oh, that's Winnie the okay. Po- Winnie the Pooh. That's where I was getting it mixed up. Yeah, I, I get the animated guys. Well, the voice actors mixed up sometimes. Oh, hold up! So I don't have faces to associate with their names. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of the voice actors are like I always forget the he's... Batman guy's name, and I always feel bad because he's great. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. Something. I get him. And, I get him and something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I Kevin Conroy. Does that I sound think right? So. Yeah. I'm not sure. That's the problem, and he's great, but I forget all the time. <laughs> But yeah, Page Master is so great. I can't. I forgot about that one, and I want to rewatch that one now because I remember, I remember when I was younger, that one confused me a little bit, to be honest. I, yeah, well, it's the intensity and the colors. Just yeah, like, and it's very fast paced. It's pretty fast paced yeah. for like a kids' movie, like for that time especially. So I would like to revisit it just because I, like, I can't remember why he goes into the book if he's even in a book. I think it's, I think it's just like uh, he has a, a freak out and hits his head, okay, in right. uh, in the library, doesn't he? He's running and then he just smashes his head because he's spooked. It's a dark library because there's a huge storm outside. I thought he was in his a treehouse. A cowardly. Oh, he boy was originally and he's reading. In That's what he does is he reads up in his, in his treehouse. To yeah. A storm only to be transformed into an animated illustration. I remember watching Christmas. another movie as a kid and loving it, and I forget what it was called. Was it? It Where wasn't it virtue. For, it wasn't. Yeah, Warriors of Virtue. No. It was... Uh, I forget what it was called. It was like Fern Gully, but it wasn't Fern Gully. It was about, about the Ferngully. like these groups of animals in like a in like a rainforest who are trying to like just live and then humans come in and they're and they're kidnapping animals and they're not trying to kill them by any means. They're trying to like move them so they can like run this forest down. But oh. there's a couple of these little animals that get Is sick that the and rescuers? then the It's not the rescuers. No. It might be I don't think it is. Because the rescuers I, are the the little mice, aren't they? That's yeah. No, I think you're right. Yeah, the rescuers are <sighs> the mice. Yeah, that. I get those two mixed up, but it's something like that. Yeah, like you know, I know what I'm talking, talking about, about, though. I do know what you're talking about. It's because there's a once weird... upon a forest. Is that it? Yeah, uh, once upon a forest. That's it. Here we go. I had to Google it. Is that it? Yeah, it's got this little this little uh, like a chipmunk. A little like mo- vole thing they can't see in in I the might even uh, think of something even different. in a hedgehog, in the forest of Dapplewood, four furlings, oh, yes, I've seen this. Abigail, a wood mouse, Edgar, a mole, Russell, a hedgehog, and Michelle, a badger, live alongside their teacher and Michelle's uncle Cornelius. One day, the furlings go on a trip through the forest with Cornelius, where they see a road to the for the first time. Russell is almost run over by a Range Rover, and the driver throws away a glass bottle that shatters in the middle of the road. Afterward, they go back to the forest to find that it has been destroyed by poison gas from an overturned tanker truck that blew a tire from the broken glass bottle. Michelle panics and runs to her home to find her parents breathing in the gas and becoming severely ill. Abigail risks her own life and saves the comatose Michelle, but can do nothing for Michelle's parents. The Furlings go to Cornelius's house nearby for shelter after they find their homes deserted, believing everyone else has have succumbed to the gas. Cornelius tells the Furlings of his past encounter with humans that claim the lives of his parents, hence why he is fearful of all human beings. He says he needs two herbs to save Michelle's life, Lungwort and Eyebright. With limited time, the Furlings head off for their journey the next day. I remember this movie. I remember watching it being like, fuck. You know what the irony this of this is? dark. Is? I don't know that one, but I definitely was thinking of Fern Gully. <laughs> I didn't know Were it was you? called okay. that. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's another one. Here in Fern Gully. I, to be yeah, honest, like there, I there's a lot of movies that like that one. as kids that, that yeah. have like a really strong, good message. Yeah. Oh, that villain in it, I remember looking badass. I just saw the, like the picture of it at the end of uh, Fern Gully. 
I don't remember anything really much about this one except the the bat that's in it and the fairy chicks. But I just remember there being fairy chicks. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, Fern Gully. This is one of those ones I have to revisit. But I remember that one being family friendly because I watched that with my grandparents. Yeah, so that well, that and Fern Gully friendly. too. I remember seeing the super the super buff little pixie dude who plays a little pan flute. Oh, I might have seen that one as well. Can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, some other good ones like that are the Goonies. I love the Goonies. I remember watching that a lot when I was growing up with my family. Oh, we had on VHS. I just got that on DVD. Not a fan too. of that movie. You don't like the Goonies? What's wrong I hate with the, the Goonies. Goonies? I fucking hate the Goonies. What's wrong with the Goonies? I blame Chunk. That's fair. Okay, that's fair. As a fat kid. With the that's truffle fair. Shuffle. That's, that's, did I tell you guys Kendall asked me to do the, the, truffle, the truffle shuffle, shuffle one time? No, you, you did, did not. not. But that's, we're, that's quite we're offensive, lying, isn't We're it? just lying there in bed cuddling. And she's like, can you do the truffle shuffle for me? I was like, how dare <laughs> you? Why don't you ever ask me to do that again? <laughs> not and then I did it for her. And then you did it. Of <laughs> and course I, you and did. Then I did it for her because I love her to death. But still. <laughs> still offensive. <laughs> I imagine. I've never been asked that. Uh, anyways, um, some other great ones. There's the Sandlot. We talked about that a bunch of times. Yep, terrifying. How do you guys feel about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? I'm just Ooh. looking through a list. I see. Loved it. Which that's the newer one, right? No. Uh, newer one's Charlie. Char- Charlie. The old okay. one's Willy. I like the older one. I like the older the one. one as well. cre- the new one's creepy as fuck. I was stoked for the new one when it came out. Uh, for when it was announced. And then very disappointed when I saw it. Because <laughs> I was a big fan of Johnny Depp at that time because of Pirates of the Caribbean and exclusively because of Pirates of the Caribbean. And that's how that's my fair. teenage brain worked. Yeah. I was a teenager. That, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't end up liking that one as much. Uh, but yeah, the only other thing I'd written down was We're Back, which we've also talked about before. Yes. But that one's awesome, and I'll talk about it forever because I love that one. Oh, like, yeah. I have it on VHS, lessons. DVD, and Blu-ray. Why? Because no matter what, my children are going to watch that fucking movie, and they're going to like it. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm sure they will because it's great. We've talked about it a bunch of times before. <laughs> it's just a great one. But that's all the ones I had. Are we, are we done with family films, guys? I think so. Uh, that's all mine. My list. I'm sure there's tons of movies that I just there's can't so think many, of. There's so many, but these are the ones that are special to us a little bit, meaning we, we've seen them, and we like them. Well, some of them. Anyways, what did you guys watch this week? Well, Craig, I want to know what you watched this week. Well, first of all, can you, you guys... You haven't done much talking in a while. Can you guys hear me? You can't hear me. Okay, well, I, I will take the... Fucking take the knew then, it! Because apparently Craig is dead. I knew it! He's not dead. Ah. He just can't hear us. Uh, um, sure. So, I watched five things. One of these things I want Craig to hear about, so I'm going to kind of wait this out. I watched yeah. The Flash. Okay, nice. that's one I know you can talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about The Flash for a couple Let's minutes. Let's talk about The Flash. I, I hated so much that last week's episode was so heavily Nora centric. The Groundhog Day episode? Yeah. She sucks so much. <laughs> oh, I can't save the day. Why don't you just let him kill you then, Nora? Why don't you consider that? Just let let him kill you. Okay. Yeah, then your problems Problem go fucking away. solved. Yeah. Can I I'm pretty sure t- interject for two seconds? Can you yes. hear me now? Yes. yes. We can oh, hear I was you so now. frustrated for the last ten minutes because I couldn't tell if you guys could hear me or not. <laughs> oh. And you guys kept talking over me. And I was like, well, I guess they've got important things to talk about, and I couldn't find a second to be like, hey, hang on, can you guys hear me? And and so then my suspicions were correct when you threw to me. Anyway, carry on with your thing. <laughs> we were talking Anyways, about I'm the talking flash. about the Flash. Okay. And uh, how much I hate Nora, which Scott brought some information to light today, which makes me hate the whole point even more. Yeah, it's a little is bit that of an odd the, point. The, the actress who plays Nora, which is the Flash and Iris's daughter from the future, is is 34 years old. She's supposed to be like 20 something, which yeah. to her credit, she looks good for her age. She if she told looks me she was 16, I would be like, "Yep. I believe yeah, it." Yeah, that makes sense. I I could have believed it. You know, I would card her if she tried And then to on the opposite end of that, me. Iris is 30. <laughs> yeah. But if you told me she was 35, I'd be like, "Yeah, that makes sense. She's got some wrinkles. I feel it." <laughs> you hate Iris so much. I hate her so much. <laughs> she could literally on, like, I'm sure she's a nice enough person in her life, but on the show, she could be like, oh my god, guys, I solved every issue we've ever had, 
and cancer. And I'd be like, fuck you, Iris. Someone <laughs> helped you. Jesus. That's how much I hate her. Yeah, I know. I know. That's a lot of our talk about it is your hatred of her. But yeah, the fact that the the actress who plays her daughter is four years older than her is yeah. an interesting choice. She doesn't look four years older than her. No, no, By no, no means at all. But What's it's just, just like, interesting. That's just like... Uh, Oh, I was going to say Benedict Cumberbatch, not him. Um, oh, the guy who plays Black Panther. Oh, um, Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Right? Chadwick Boseman? Yeah. Yeah. He's like 40, but he looks like Damn. 27. Yeah. yeah Dude's no, old. I, if he told me he was, he, he was like 24, I'd be like, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, he was like, he 30, has mature he was like 36 years old, and he played a college like senior going into the, like, the NFL draft. And I believed it. I was like, yeah, he looks like a kid. Yeah, especially when he's sh- like, if she has left the goatee, he looks even, yeah. I can imagine him looking even younger. Yeah. Wow. No, we he's need, like 40. We need to get some of that Hollywood money is what we need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need uh, them Hollywood looks first, not looks for radio. <laughs> That's fair. That's a fair point. <laughs> but anyway, so I watched The Flash. I went to the theaters this week and I watched that movie that's up for a shit ton of awards, The Favorite. Okay, yeah. Top three worst movies I have ever seen. You haven't ah. seen the 15, 17 of Paris. Yeah. It, I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> no. It, it has not bumped. Yet. <laughs> it has bumped one of my former top three movies out, okay, which so leaves Glass yep. <laughs> and The Favorite as two of my least favorite movies ever made. And I don't even know what the third one would be. So they might just be my least favorite movies Period. It's those are the that two. A movie called the favorite is so far. Down is my least answer. favorite. Yeah. yeah, it's so bad. Like I, I like the premise. I like that it's a period piece. Yeah. The acting by Rachel Weisz is phenomenal because you know your boy had a massive crush on her as a kid. Yep. The mummy did things to him. And that then was the I, I don't phrase I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, that came yeah. out. I was just like, oh wait, yeah, no, she was in the mummy. Yeah, she was in the mummy. <laughs> just for clarification. Yep. Not my mummy. <laughs> nope. The I, mummy. It sounded like you were calling her mummy, and it was just <laughs> no. Oh, so I, I said the mummy. You, no, was I didn't more hear the. To it. I, I didn't hear, hear the. the very much. If, if the sonographer mummy. plays back. If the, if <laughs> the court <laughs> reporter would read back my statement, you'd find that I would not perjure myself. Perjure myself. I said the mummy. We'll Anyways, like and then I decide. don't like Emma Stone as an actress, but she does a real good job at making you hate her in this. Okay. So She's good I'll give that. her credit where it's due. And the actress who plays Queen Anne, she was pretty good. The guy who plays the Beast is in it as the main antagonist. It has a 94% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It's, yeah. It's up yeah, for like a bunch everyone Oscars. loved this movie. It's so fucking bad. Like, I feel like three people voted for Wait, it. They're so like, what, yeah, okay. what's bad about it is my question. Okay. The ending. Worst ending I've ever seen. Ever. Okay. Do you want to know what it is? Do you want me to spoil this for you? Well, it's based on historical facts, so... Yeah, okay, I'll spoil it for you. The ending is... Emma Stone is one. Okay? Rachel Weiss's character has been ostracized and kicked out of England. Banished from the land. Because Emma Stone made it seem like she was stealing from the country. Okay. Stealing like 7,000 pounds a year or whatever. That's a lot of money. Like, she was stealing money, apparently. Yeah. They never really say if it's allegedly. true or not, but yeah. allegedly. So she gets kicked out. And then Emma Stone is just the worst. She is not a good friend. She's just very, mm, I won. And just a total bitch. And they show her, like, pretending to crush a rabbit to cause it pain. Oh. And then stops. But one of these rabbits, there's 17 of them. The rabbits are Queen Anne's, like, kids, so to speak. Yeah. Because she had 17 either miscarriages, stillbirths, or mm-hmm. or they just died on the table type thing. 17 losses, so she has a rabbit per kid, right? Yeah, that part was not historically accurate. I yeah. remember that being a clarification in one of the videos yeah. I watched about it. <laughs> so they have that, and then Queen Anne gets up, and she realizes she makes a mistake. She's like, fuck this bitch, I need to go get my friend. And then she can't because she's had a stroke, and she's sick, and just a whole bunch of shit. So she tells Emma Stone to rub her leg, and then as she starts rubbing her leg, she, like, in, has to move up, and then the queen, like, kind of makes her finger fuck her. Oh. And, then, and then it does, like, a, like a shadowy kind of see-through overlap ghost face thing where you see both of their faces going through, like, how Queen Anne's being finger fucked, Emma Stone is fingering, finger fucking her, and then there's just, like, rabbits multiplying 
in the background. Just like a sea of fucking rabbits. And that's it. And then it just says the favorite. I remember sitting there being like, how the fuck is this up for so many awards? That sounds like a very artistic type of ending. Why, why did an instant family get better better nominations? It's, the movie was so much better. Sounds like if sounds like it's ripe for Family Guy to do a, a bit about it. Yeah. Is like what it the in, like instant me. family was an instant favorite. The favorite was an instant flop. It's so bad. Like, Rachel Weisz is badass, and she's gorgeous. That is, like, the only good thing I remember from this movie. Like, ugh. And the finger-fucking, of course. (laughs) I like how this is how we're ending off our family-friendly episode. Is me getting super pissed? (laughs) Well, just the... Just the vulgarity? Yeah, that's the word I was looking for, yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of vulgarity in this episode. For something that's family-friendly, we have... Yeah. Uh, we are not. It's a good thing we've not. got that... Ex- was the it? explicit? Is it explicit? Yeah, explicit yeah. rating. It would have been better if you'd said exclusive, though, all the way. I almost did. <laughs> that's I where almost did, and I was like, that's not the right word. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, next up on my list, I'll hit you with something more uh, vulgar again, but then I'll bounce back to two other things. And I watched that Abducted in Plain Sight. Yeah. It's that's documentary so story <laughs> it sounds on dark. Netflix. Yeah, super dark. It's about these this guy in fuck, I want to say Omaha, but that doesn't sound right. Somewhere. Ohio maybe. Uh, Wherever it was. Doc? Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that I'm like it doesn't really matter. This guy this guy shows up, right? And his name is Bob something rather. Bob and then killer. something like that. Bob and he meets another Idaho. family uh, Idaho, Idaho, that's what it was. Udaho. <laughs> yeah, Idaho. And uh, anyway, so he shows up, and he's a weird dude, but he's really charming. And he charms the fuck out of this family. And then out of nowhere, they show his brother talking to the camera, kind of giving his opinion. Like, oh, yeah, he's always been weird. He was a pedophile. Like, he molested our sister, but what are you going to do about it? And you're like, what the fuck? And yeah, then they start talking about how... show off. <laughs> yeah. And then you just keep watching, and this nope, like this guy, wouldn't. this Bob guy, like you Bob find out how killer. he's, how well, not serial killer. Oh, he's not how the serial he, killer. Okay, my bad. No, he's not. How he Bob like he's infatuated by this family's younger daughter Jan, who I'm not sure if it was the oldest daughter, the middle, or the youngest. It was one of the sisters. This girl Jan, I think it was the youngest, and he's infatuated with her. He wants to take her places and buy her things and take pictures. And the family doesn't think there's anything wrong with that. The parents are like, Oh no, he's a cool guy. He just, you know, he just wants to look after the, the kids cause he doesn't have them of his own or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, Super fucking sketch. What right. The fuck? <laughs> 22 minutes into this, into this movie, you find out that like, or they have like the FBI investigator who comes out and he's like, yeah. So people, we found out later by profiling, People in his situation, their goal is to get to the child. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to destroy the parents so they're more focused about themselves and he can sneak in and get the child. So he goes and he's like best buddies with this other guy named Bob who's the dad. And they go for a drive and he's like, oh, just I'm, I'm so pissed. I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry with my wife. Like, I just need to have sex. Oh, I know and where then, this is going. I've yeah, heard about then, this already. And then he's, yeah, and then he's like, ha, ha, ha. And he's like, no, seriously, like, it's just childish things, like, you know, whatever. Up, and then, Bob. and then, no, he gives him a hand job. My bad. I got it he mixed gives, up. He, yeah. He, he gives a handy. And you're like, what the fuck? And then they continue like this, you know, this no, kind again, of No, again, this is affair. where I would have turned it off if I hadn't already. <laughs> Honestly, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, how much weirder can this get? So then after this hand job happens and, you know, there's that awkwardness between, you know, Bob and his wife, other Bob, bad Bob, he then goes, goes there one day after school and says, hey, can I take, take this Jan girl over to the stables to ride a horse? And then the mom's like, no, better not. Like, Bob will be home soon. And he's like, ah. And then the daughter's like, mom, let me do it. And then Bob's like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, I, I can have her home before Bob gets back. And he kidnaps this girl. He takes her. He goes and jacks his RV, like, gets his RV that he has in storage. And they leave. The, and they go to Mexico. Where she wakes up. He's been giving her so many, like, 
sleeping pills to knock her the fuck out. She keeps waking up and going back to sleep and waking up and going back to sleep. And then this whole, like, he puts a tape recorder beside her where it's, like, him pretending to be aliens, telling her that she's actually an alien and that, or she's half alien. And it's, like, this Jesus story, you know, with uh, Mary Magdalene, or not Mary Magdalene, uh, the Virgin Mary, and then what's-his-face, Joseph. So it's, like, that type of thing, but with aliens. So in order to save her planet that she's half from, she needs to sleep with the chosen mate. Or whatever it was. And this ends up being Bad Bob, of course. Mm-hmm. So it's just this super fucking weird thing where they go, they get married in Mexico. And then the like the, her parents are just freaking out and they're pissed. And then he comes, or they get, they get arrested. And then he's like, listen, I'm going to blackmail everyone with the information that your husband's going to give me hand jobs If you don't just say that I didn't do anything. So they say he didn't do anything because they don't want that coming out and getting kicked out of the Church of Latter-day Saints. Ooh, love Mormons. Yep. Well, then it ends up happening after all this shit's happening and this guy's molested their daughter and married her. He sleeps with the mom, yep, makes her feel pretty and shit and sleeps with the mom. So after this happens over the course of like eight months, they hook up a whole bunch of times. They get, like go to get divorced and they're like, no, no, we need to be together. We need to be strong. And this guy's just like always in their fucking life. Like, it's just, it's so weird. Like, I don't know how this guy didn't end up with a bullet between his eyes. Like, you'd think someone would have lost their shit. Yeah, I can't tell you the choices or the rationale behind the choices. The lack of choices. Yeah, or the lack of choices of idiots. (laughs) Um, Just, like, no, I... I don't watch those types of shows for this type of reason because it just makes me feel so bad for all the people out there being raised by fucking morons. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, that's why people should have to do tests to have kids. She, yeah, like... Yeah, like, it's not the kid's fault that she's not that bright it, well, and her and, parents just let the shit happen. Well, the, and, like, to me, it's like, if my parents told me I could trust, like, this random Bob guy, I would assume I could. I could think of at least three, you know, uncle dudes in my life you know, who, who could have been you, those? Well, not. no, but they they had the potential, they, but they didn't. Is my point because because my, the parents just trusted. Them. Yes, and they knew all these people yeah. for like twenty five years and stuff. And it's like, and we also never were like left alone with people and stuff like that. Like our parents made sure. Because who the fuck we was an adult just hang out with a kid? Why? Like why? Like why are you letting this guy sleep in your daughter's bedroom and cuddle her? The, why are you letting that fucking happen, that's Bob? Just, there's no good reason for like. Ration, like the rationale behind that is just stupid and I'm just like I'm sorry it's just ridiculous and yeah I can't watch those types of shows because it just makes me no, it's, very it's frustrated fucking stupid. luckily yeah. it's only like an hour and a half movie we were just like oh it's a movie My, yeah yeah it's, it's like a documentary Somebody... but then the uh, the Jan girl is like one of the narrators in it, and she's telling her side of the story and like she seems like it's so fucking normal she's like no like I was a kid and they were saying this and, then, and I'm like how are you not more fucked up than you are well, that's self awareness really like yeah. if you grew up one way you don't know it's any way else is different. It's just, it's the naivete of being like, That's oh, true. I'm the center of the world, pretty much. Like, everyone's yeah, life is I'm like mine. Save it's this like, alien, nope. this alien planet. Yeah. Well, isn't Anyone that part else of... is getting molested by Bob? <laughs> it's just no one. <laughs> so I got two more things on my list. <laughs> I hope they're not. Some more, more positive <laughs> things. I've been watching Psych again, nice. which is awesome. Did you guys see that? There's a oh yeah, of course you did. Psych you movie two. Yeah, Man, yeah, we're posted, on I mean. the mailing list. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know why I even brought. They it. I asked like, me to I only know this because one of you shared this. <laughs> oh, you bet your ass I shared it. <laughs> you guys get a freaking guest appearance in this one because you guys yeah. deserve it. Because I still oh, haven't watched that first son. movie. <laughs> you know that's right. It's an Amazon original, right? Or no? Oh, yeah. No, I have no idea. Okay, no, it was USA, remember. wasn't it? Oh, that USA. It was on? That okay. So it was some TV. Yeah. It was a. That's yeah. what it was. I just couldn't remember if it was streaming or TV or not. Anyways, but yeah. The same. last thing I watched is the latest, uh, one of the latest and greatest projects on Netflix. It's called Hearts Beat Loud. Okay, I scrolled past that today. I haven't even seen that. What is that? It's a Nick Offerman movie. All oh, right, I'm sold. Yep, where he plays a record store owner who is obviously going through some hard times. His daughter is looking to go away to school. They live in New York, 
but she wants to go to UCLA to be a doctor. You know, you, one of your very very typical story that happens often. They're going through some stuff. He's a sing, he's a single yeah he's a single father, but it's a it's a music story. It's about like how they're both musically talented, and then he just he happens to record a song of theirs and he puts it on uh, on Spotify, and then a whole bunch of stuff ensues, and it's. It kind of reminds me of, you know how like Robin Williams movies where when he had a beard, like it was, you know, it was, wasn't as funny. It was more emotional. Yeah. Nick Offerman's like that. You know, when he has just the mustache, like, oh, he's going to be a sarcastic prick. Or when he has like a small beard, you're like, oh, he's playing a serious role. And then when he has like a bigger beard, you're like, this yeah, okay. Be he's got, one, he's got some wisdom. <laughs> yeah. I spent this whole movie in like the pre-cry mode. You know, we were like, something's going to get me. Yeah. I'm going to cry. <laughs> When's it happen? And it was the whole movie like that, just like. <sighs> but I have something to say about it, and I'm not going to give you any other details other than it. But Ted Danson yeah, is behind a bar. You, you buried the lead. Ted Danson <laughs> plays a bartender. I didn't know that, but I knew Ted Danson was in it. And buried, I was saving that as backup. Lead. I was saving that as backup, just so that in case you're like, nah, I don't think I want to see it. I could hit you with it, and you'd be like, I'm watching it tonight. <laughs> Okay, well, Nick Offerman's usually enough to sell it for me. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah, a couple people in this movie that makes it worth watching. Excuse me. But that's it. That's my list. Uh huh. Uh huh. Scott, you want to go next? Uh, you go next? You, you, can you can go next. Right. You can go All next. Right. Mine's pretty short. I had a hard time remembering what I watched this week. Um,. <laughs> I watched the most recent episode of Grey's Anatomy. That was a thing. Have, have you? Are you caught up on Grey's? <laughs> no. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I know Andrew and me are both pretty caught up on but it. But I, yeah, I have one season, like this most recent season. But yeah. I watched the most recent, recent episode. episode. Spoiler alert: Everyone lives. In this one. Yeah. I know. But it ended on a cliffhanger where someone might die. Someone, someone might. might have cancer or. God, who knows? Something. <laughs> It's <laughs> that show so never ending. I <laughs> am not its biggest fan. No, I can I I can see that. We'll put I, it that way. I feel like I'm all three of us honest. had the same motivation behind ever watching it. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. Yeah, that show it sucked me in at first. It was believable for the first couple seasons. I was like, yeah, there's probably some weird shit that happens. There's way too much sex happening in this so hospital. So much. That and not enough sanit shows. sanitizing. Yeah, they like they do not sanitize movie. anything. However, I can believe it. Yep. And now it's just become that point where like it's so incestuous. It's just everybody's fucking everybody. There was and like... Uh, and what crazy surgeries can they do? Yep, there was like a six-person web... That Sam had to explain to to arrive at one conclusion for me. To just explain one tiny little plot point, there was like six people that were involved. It's wow, like, Geez, that's guys, when you know you, you just, need to like wrap it up. <laughs> why don't you just move out of the Pacific Northwest? Like, it's a big country. You don't need to be in Seattle. Well, no, that's the funny part. They do because Seattle looks like Vancouver, and yeah. that's well, where they film. <laughs> yeah, it, because of the good old inexpensive filming costs. Yeah. I, under, I understand. I understand that Canadian. That's where you get those gray those skies. <laughs> the people just need to leave. <laughs> the doctors need to leave. That's my problem. And oh man, like just <laughs> the show you watched once. <laughs> okay, there's like three characters that I like on that show. I, there's a couple that I liked I, prior, but lately I fucking hate them. Which which ones do you like? And you have to physically describe them because I'm probably not going to know their names. Okay, I forget his name. Chief, the old black guy. Old black guy. Okay, I watched enough of that. Love him. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's good. I'm on board. For the little bit that I've watched, I don't mind his character very much. Uh, man, most wise, of the characters I like are dead. <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. I'm like, all the ones I like are mostly dead or written off yeah. the show. Like, uh, I like great like her second sister. I forget her name. Oh, yeah, the one that was dating Maggie? somebody. No. That's helpful, Scott. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't. The one, the one <laughs> who's Chief's dating daughter. Somebody. The one who's Chief's daughter. I don't know. Her and uh, 
just gonna bug the shit out of me. I can't remember. I'm, gonna I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just don't don't. I'm don't like I can't remember, it. and I don't really care to be honest. I honestly can't remember like a like a top list. Like everyone I liked just fucking got killed off or cut. Yep. It's gonna piss me off now. <laughs> Owen, I hate him. He annoys the shit out of me. I liked him at first when they first introduced him, and then he just oh, I loved Callie. I liked Callie too. Because she was a smoke show. Cut her. Oh, I like Karev. That's who it was. Alex. The, like, oh, the, the, yeah, pr- yeah. the pretty boy pediatrician or whatever his name is. Pediatric surgeon. Yes. Love him. I would describe him as the bad boy, but... <laughs> he was a bad boy at first. Well, no, you said pretty He's boy. been arrested. Is that what I said? Yeah, that's why I was oh. like, I would describe him as a bad no. boy, not He's a pretty, pretty boy. boy. There's... He's a model. Well, well... In the context of the show, I That's would call true. him the pretty boy. <laughs> he was I'm not saying he's not handsome. He's on TV. I just mean, in a show where there's a dude named McSteamy and then another one who was something's name. I don't remember the other guy's nickname. You know what I mean? I don't. That's just my whole, my point. <laughs> I would describe him as the bad, the bad boy. <laughs> That's fair. And but I, like I also Joe. liked his character because he's his yeah. character seemed the most real too. Like he got in yeah. shit. Like he was dumb a couple times. Like every time he got in, like the trouble with the law, I'm like, yeah, come on, man, you know better than that. <laughs> Beat the shit out of some guy. Come yeah. on. <laughs> and I, I like Joe, his fiance. Love her. But that's because she's adorable. Now we're talking about people I don't know. The only character yeah, we're, I know. We've gone so far deep into this. It's like, wait, no. You talked about one. You saw one episode. <laughs> the uh, one full That's episode. Fair. I've seen partials before. Okay. The one and only character that I hate. I had to look it up. Is is Doctor Bailey? Fucking hater. Yeah, she annoys the shit. Can't stand her. Can't stand I like her. her. I like Cannot her. Cannot stand her. I like she that she's the one who just sasses everyone. And she's yeah, like, but she's <laughs> needless about it. She was okay at first. You see, that's what that's I think fair. has happened. I haven't, because I haven't watched for, in like two or three seasons. So. What, yeah. what, I th- what I think has happened is that she started off being like the hard ass yeah. that's, you know, all right if you get to know she her. She was the mentor thing. is what she was. Exactly. So. But now that's like her entire character. So then when you watch it further down, which is all well, I've done. yeah. The, the first like four or five, maybe six seasons. It's like it's not believe super believable, but it's enough where you're like, okay, there's just enough character development. You see the same characters, not everybody's fucking everybody, and there's just just enough drama where you're like, okay, I believe it. This is a workplace series. Yeah. And then <laughs> after not. that, they're like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Let's bring these new people into Bone Hard, and then we'll cut some of these guys off. And at what 15 16 seasons in now yeah. they're like i have no idea what else to do let's have them do fucking butt surgery on the moon let's have this guy fuck that guy but this other girl gets pregnant by rubbing up against a bed pole <laughs> like it just they're just stretching it so far yep. and it's a prime example of a show that's gone on way too long yep. yeah. and it's just and they're just making episodes for money you can tell everybody's got like a uh, like their characters already figured out and every single time they walk on the frame, you're like, yeah, I know what you're going to say because it's exactly the same as what you said the last time. We just rehashed the, the words. Decade. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, I, I don't have that frame of reference. Specifically, <laughs> Dr. Bailey. It was every time she's going to come on the screen, she's going to say something awful to somebody for absolutely no reason, come across as the very selfish prick that she is, and then uh, I'm going to hate her is pretty much it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. That's fair. That's that's how I felt. You need you need to go track down and watch the musical episode. I don't feel like it. <laughs> because they do a terrible version of how to save a life. That sounds oh, yeah, they, and like it lasts about show. eleven and a half minutes. <laughs> I would shut it off. That that episode is actually so bad amongst T V show like musicals that I musicals? don't remember yeah. any of it at all. <laughs> like I definitely saw it. I don't remember any of the songs, which is not a good point for a TV show musical episode. Because, like, Buffy, I can sing you one of the songs right now. And then some other ones, you know. Yeah. <laughs> How about your mother? <laughs> other things. How about your mother? Um, the Flash, Flash, obviously. Yeah. That, that's, like, my favorite musical episode of anything. Yep, same here. But... Grey sucks. Yep. So I didn't just watch that though this weekend. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, I, w- I went and saw the Lego Movie Part Two. Yes. 
Did you like did you like the all the time traveling references they threw when he was trying to build the I I did. Um, build the thing? I didn't like it as much as the uh the first one? as the first one. Well, it wasn't as groundbreaking as the it's, first one either, it, right? Well, it was all established I think part characters. Of what, yeah, well that that's part of it. And the other part of it is that oh, well obviously they've got to rehash the same jokes it's a movie for children. Um yeah. <laughs> but what part of like all all of the lego movie was fantastic and then you find out that it's part of another like it's it's just a kid's imagination on a table yeah and we already knew that there's too much in and out of this yeah one. well yeah that was it too is you kept getting pulled out into the end it's like yeah we know there's, there's a, maya we, rudolph we get it we know there's a that was a good part of the movie uh we know there's a there's a a real world element to this we don't need to keep getting pulled out and put back in and pulled out and put back in again and then the uh, the whole uh, Rex is just an older version of uh, spoiler alert is is just a time traveling version of of Emmett. Yeah. Is, uh, was it like real predict- Emmett Extreme or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was. It was just really uh, it was predictable. I mean, besides the fact that they had Chris Pratt do the voice for both. Yeah. Because obviously, um, it it seemed really. They should have had Bob Saget just as like a <laughs> nod to How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, just like narrating. That just been funny. Just for hilarious. Like, Holy fudge! <laughs> but I didn't say fudge. I would have. Uh, yeah, I I probably would have would have laughed a little harder at that movie if they did have Bob Saget do the older version. Of I loved the rehash of the fluffy fluffy junior yeah. fluffy senior Jeff that they busted out twice in this movie. <laughs> Not once, twice. The second time was a little less obvious. Where the, yeah, where they fused it with uh, with the raptors and stuff. Was it the raptors or was it, it was the, the raptors sewer? Yeah, it was the raptors. It was the, raptors the sewer babies. Oh my god. Yeah, the sewer babies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, so I saw that. That was good. I enjoyed it. Sam fell asleep. I almost did. It was not a great. It was. It was. It was an okay time. I'll, I'll Sounds like it. <laughs> I know, right? She fell. She fell asleep. She fell asleep. Yeah, she I almost did. I almost did. We had did. a good time. <laughs> it was. It was fun. Oh, I, I I love that movie. Yeah. I can't wait for it to come out on on Blu-ray. I might go see it this weekend. I'll I'll definitely watch it again. I feel like I'll probably enjoy it more when I'm more awake. But I was very tired. Um, what else did I watch? I watched. Well, Sam and I watched uh, this movie called The Next Three Days. Did I have either of you guys heard about it? It sounds vaguely familiar. 2010, Russell Crowe, and now I'm blanking on her name, Elizabeth Banks. Yeah, but not as a 16-year-old. <laughs> and Liam Neeson's in it very, very briefly. Yeah, I got nothing for you. Um, so it's about uh, basically the movie sets up where. Um, you get the feeling that Elizabeth Banks, who's married to Russell Crowe, is kind of she. She's not afraid to to say what she feels, especially when it comes to confrontation. She's not afraid of confrontation. And she's a little bit hot headed. So then that that's all teed up, and then the next scene is her getting arrested for murder of her boss, and she goes to prison. And so basically, the beginning, it's like. Um, Man, it feels like I don't remember much of this movie at all. Russell Crowe kind of getting on with the fact that his wife's in prison, but he's like, she's going to get out eventually because I know she didn't do it and that kind of thing. And then she drops the, but I did. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, snap. Now what's he going to do? And he's just like, yeah, well, I'm going to break you out of prison. And so he meets up with Liam Neeson, who's like a guy who broke out of prison. And he gives him the whole thing, the whole plan. Then he, he starts planning it. And then he tries to test run it and almost gets caught. And then he f- comes up with this massive final plan to do it and, like, puts it in motion. And then obviously there's hiccups along the way. And then they escape, and that's the end of the movie. Um, it was pretty good. I liked it. I realized I just described it like it wasn't great. Um, Part of what sold me on the movie was Russell Crowe, and the other part of the movie that sold it for me was the fact that it is set and appears to be shot in Pittsburgh, and I love that city. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so nice. I was on board for that, too. There you go. Um, I liked it. 
You should try it. At, le at least try it. If you're bored. It uh, isn't on any streaming platforms as far as I know. I think we rented it. <laughs> I know. Just so not gonna watch it. it. Sounds you like just give me the like a reason <laughs> never to watch it. I own. Th it's... I pay for three streaming services. I don't rent movies. Man, it sounds sometimes... like a Dustin Hoffman movie. I could. I think it was Dustin Hoffman movie. Where it's it's kind of similar. Where like you think it's one thing that's going on, and then it's something else that's going on. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that you find out that she's uh, she's innocent. Uh, they so they she's do just lying like, through her teeth. They, they do. I think it was just to get him to stop he was being a little bit overbearing and that was like his obsession because okay. he like drained his finances and stuff to, to try to get to her finance up. it yeah uh. um and then uh yeah so they like play a sequence of what the events are supposed to be and it looks like she kills her and then towards the end they play this the actual sequence of events that happens and you're like oh she didn't do it Oh. oh, but I mean, obviously. <laughs> so then last night we watched this movie. I'm sure you guys have heard of it called Just Friends. Just Friends. Yep. Starring one. one Mr. Ryan Reynolds. A young ish Ryan Reynolds. Oh, I, I was getting this mixed up with something else. Go on, though. I do remember it now. Funny movie. This is the one where he like goes back to his hometown. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, it like, starts off high school, or that. Or high school best yeah. friend. And then, uh, and then Anna Faris takes the yeah. airplane down because she cooks the, uh, um, she cooks the food in the microwave with the tinfoil on it. And so the airplane goes down. They end up in his hometown. <laughs> yep. Classic Anna Faris. <laughs> that's that's a, the premise you have to buy that's into in this whole, this movie. That's <laughs> the that's. Well, I mean, yeah. that's what causes. That's what airplanes. causes them to end. Well, because they were flying to Paris, <laughs> so they just make an emergency landing because there was a fire on the airplane. Oh, she was on the airplane. That yeah, because Anna missed, okay. and no, it's not. It's not unbelievable. <laughs> I thought you meant like the person Anna in Ferris his hometown <laughs> no. put something in the microwave. No, <laughs> turned Anna it on. Ferris is a super the... entitled, terrible pop star. Okay, like her music gotcha. is god awful, and that's kind of the funny part of the movie. I'm back on the funny parts of the movie. I understand now. Yeah. Yeah. So she takes down the airplane because they're flying to Paris. And he's like, oh shit, we're actually in Trenton, New Jersey. And. Ugh, right off the bat, that sounds awful. There's a, well, it's New Jersey. There's a whole yeah. thing with, uh, with, with Ryan Reynolds and Amy Smart, who is his high school crush. And, yeah, right. It's a That's pretty entertaining movie. I, I, I enjoyed it. That's all I watched, though. So, Scott. Okay, what did I watch? I watched the Umbrella Academy. I took Friday off. Uh, the whole thing? Yep. Binged it all on Friday. I guess How is I it? Took the day off. I really enjoyed it. I liked it. It's about... Am I going to like it? I think you would, but... Well, then. Well, but... shit, that doesn't give me anything. <laughs> well, all I was thinking is like, well, there's certain... I was hoping it was going to be a yes or a fuck no, and I would just be like, cool, Well, no, the reason way. I had to think about it was because it... It's a little bit strange, and it's a little slow, but I really enjoyed it nonetheless, because I like the, the parts that are slow are just shot really well, so it's like a kind of, it's interesting to watch, because you're like really glued to the screen during it, and I really like the premise of this, you know, group of uh, this family who, you know, are all adopted because they were all born on from this freak thing that happened all on the same okay. day, right? Yeah. And then they, you know, one of their, one of the siblings comes back from the future knowing that the apocalypse is going to happen in seven days, but he has no idea what causes it, what it is. Is that the creepy little kid? Yes. Who's yeah. got like a 70 year old man in his head. Okay. Yeah. So I really enjoyed it because it's like such a different superhero thing. Like a lot of people are comparing it okay. to X-Men and I'm like, well, just cause you have teenagers with superpowers with doesn't mean it's X-Men. Like <laughs> that's, <laughs> Like yes, it's called the Umbrella Academy. Like I get, the, I could see some of the parallels, but they're very like, they're very loose parallels. It'd be like being like, well, yeah, Batman's got a cape, and so does Superman. And it's like, well, okay, if you want to draw the, if that's how little a comparison that makes things the same, okay. But yeah. to me, I didn't see I, like. Bob Parr wanted a cape, but Edna Mode said no, no capes. No capes. <laughs> no capes. That movie's gonna give me PTSD one day. 
that's understandable. But no, I really liked it. Nonetheless, like Umbrella Academy, uh, and I think you would enjoy it. It's just like the reason I was like hesitant was I was trying to think of it fit more into the Gotham car- category or more of the Legion category on its weird scale, and I think it's a little more towards Legion. Okay. And especially, and particularly quality. Well, I know you have a hard on for Legion. I so. love Legion, <laughs> exactly right. And this one I really enjoyed. I actually really want to rewatch it. It's gotten a song stuck in my head for like a week now. I think we're alone now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just really enjoyed it. It's uh, the action is like really gruesome and brutal, but really well done. I thought the CGI is like crazy good for again a TV show technically. Uh, but it looks like movie quality, and okay. I just like that it's like it's. I really enjoy these ones that aren't DC or Marvel based. That we just get these random yeah. kind of things nowadays. So I just like it because well, I like I like things that are comic or or graphic novel inspired, brought to real life. Yeah, and just I, like just like polar, like something something different that most of us haven't fucking really heard much of. Exactly. And, prior. Which I had heard of this one before, but I only heard of it before because it's written by the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Okay. So the the Umbrella Academy graphic novel, he he wrote the story for that. He was that's involved with cool. this. So that's the only reason I had heard of it before. My, I was curious about checking it out was because I just had that weird knowledge of that. Listened to a lot of My Chemical Romance in my emo phase. Uh, grade that's eight. Uh, a lot of hair. Uh, anyways, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed it nonetheless. I want to check out the graphic novel too now to see if it matches up because yeah, you don't you you come into this story with them all as adults, and it seemed it seemed at first like it was gonna be a little bit more like you'd have a little bit more of them as like teenagers, which I feel maybe the comic book's a little bit more that way, but I'd have to read it to find out. So, but yeah, I enjoyed it nonetheless. It's not very long. I think it's only ten episodes if I'm remembering correctly. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, that's probably the best. Anyways, I also finished up watching Master Chef this week because I need something to watch after the Umbrella Academy, uh, and I was just really freaking curious to see who was going to win this competition that was done two years ago. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I finished that, and then I we already talked about the Flash, and I started rewatching Happy Season One because the second season's coming out next week. So hell yeah, yeah. So it premieres on. I might save that for Christmas though. That's fair. It's oh, it comes the it premieres on the second season premieres on Sci Fi next week. Okay. So we will probably get it on Netflix. I imagine in two to three months. Mm. Uh, I kind of I kind of hope it's built around like St. Patty's Day or something. That would be pretty cool. That would be cool. I like the idea of just having everyone, you know, everyone drunk and partying throughout the city while he's trying to do his thing. Yeah. I'd be interested, especially if he's like trying to be sober, like he's trying yeah. to sober up and be better. But it's like he's the whole thing's. St. Patrick's Day going all around him. Damn, yeah, that'd be that's it. Just everything. Everything's just a fucking riot. Yeah, I did. I'd enjoy that. Yeah, I'd be so down for that. But yeah, that's all I watched this week. Beauty. What a short list. Yeah, no, I wanted to keep it nice and short and sweet. No, nothing absolutely terrible. I like it. <laughs> that's what I aim for. Or I just don't tell you guys about it when I do. That's fair. Don't be <laughs> embarrassed. Cool. But uh, on that note, that's it. Thanks, guys. That's it. Super positive episode, guys. Kept oh, swearing to a minimum. It's great. After after the the halfway point. Yeah, after the family section. Yeah, after the family section, we got real PG. Yep. It was weird. <laughs> right. Tune That's in next we week when we talk about movies and TV shows and stuff. And what we watched this week, which is a fan favorite, I've been told. By, By one fan. Yep. We don't talk. By about one fan. That. Hi, one fan. Hi. Hi, one fan. Thanks for listening. <laughs> All right. Talk to you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.